Governor Bill Namatao and Little Price Rice and Bandit Tree. Abductors and wedding guests released ransom to 60 million men. Christian Association of Nigeria and others won parts of civil Muslim Muslim tickets. On business, subsidy overtakes health, education, and welfare budgets more back once Nigeria. On international thing, Russians win to encycle several Donetsk. President Zelensky prints for arms and sports. X-Man City Captain Company appointed as Burnley Manager. Hello dear, welcome to FETV Newsroom. I am Umu Dr. Muhammad, now the news. The Governor of the First State, Dr. Billy Muhammad Matawale, has expressed his utmost concern over the rising banditry activities in the state in recent times, especially the rise of informants to criminals. The Governor, who commiserated with the families and loved ones of the recent unfortunate abduction of promising young entrepreneurs of BBG Plaza, said his administration is not oblivious of the situation at hand and has since taken more security steps in arresting its escalation. For more reports on the story, our correspondent Rafia Minasura reports. Governor Matawala announced that the singular incident marks another sad moment in the fight against security challenges they are facing in their dear states. He said he appealed to the families of all abducted persons to have confidence in their ability to do all that is needed to be done in rescuing their dear ones. The governor said he had have directed all security agencies for speedy location of the abducted persons and will ensure a lab rescued. However, the governor warned that his administration will not tolerate any act of indiscipline from unscrupulous persons who want to manipulate their present situation to secure cheap political goals. Rafi Amin Asara, reporting for SVTV News. Zamfara State Governor Billo Mohammed Matawale has approved the appointment of new Emir of Kotarokoshi. He is Garba Ahmed Bunu. Malam Bunu's appointment followed the death of his father and the longest serving Emir in the state, Al Haji Ahmed Umar May Kotarokoshi who died on Thursday, June 10, at the age of 93. Having been on the throne for 61 years, Kwatarkoshi is in Bongudu local government area of the state. The announcement, which is contained in a statement by the Secretary to the State Government, Kabiru Balarabi Sardonanda Isa on Tuesday, said the appointment takes effect from Tuesday, 14th, June 2022. A governorship candidate in the just-concluded People's Democratic Party primary election in Zemfar State, Ibrahim Shehu has filed a suit at the Federal High Court in Guso, challenging the election of Dauda Lawan Dari as the party's flag bearer. Malam Shehu also prayed the court to nullify the election and conduct a fresh one due to series of irregularities. Reports by Amina Kabir Saiki. The dependents in the suit are the People's Democratic Party, the PDP Election Committee Chairman sent to the state, Al Haja Adamuma Waziri and the state PDP chairman, Colonel Balamonde, retired. Other dependents are the state PDP flag bearer, Dr. Doda Alawaldari, and the Independent National Electoral Commission. The presiding judge of the court, Justice Bapa Aliyu, adjourned the case to July 8 due to non-presence of the defendants and their lawyers. Addressing newsmen immediately after the court sitting, Counsel to the plaintiff, Barista Ibrahim Ben Losani, said they were in the court to challenge the election of Dr. Donda Alawaldari, which he said was characterized by a series of irregularities and breach of electoral provisions. I'm Mina Kabir Saki reporting for SBTV News. The abductors of Zamfara wedding guests have reduced the ransom placed on their victims to 60 million naira. The abductors had on Monday demanded 145 million naira ransom for the release of the 20 wedding guests in captivity. They placed 5 million naira ransom on each of the victims and vowed not to release them individually. The chairman, Union of Communications, Guso Local Government Area, Mustafa Khalifa, confirmed the developments to newsmen. He says the union is in contact with the kidnappers to ensure their safe and quick return. The chairman, Drug Law Enforcement Agency, retired Brigadier General Buba Murwa, has commended the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, for his willingness 
to strengthen the working relationship between the anti-narcotic agency and the police. The chairman gave the commendation on Tuesday in Abuja while decorating one of the newly promoted police officers attached to his office, Assistant Superintendent of Police Mandi Umar, with his new rank. For more on the report, Zainab Abdulwasi. In a statement by the director, media and advocacy NDLEA, Mr. Femi Baba Femi, Brigadier General Marwa said that recent promotion of over 21,039 junior cadet policemen show the commitment of the IGP. He said this was to boost the morale of the forces rank and file as well as enhancing the performance of the police. The NDLEA was also commended this, with which the Police Service Commission aided by, aided by a former IGP, al Haji Musliyu Smith, had been working with the police to strengthen the force. According to him, the IGP is not only working relentlessly to make the police better, he has also been supportive of their work in NDLEA. Zainab Abdulwasi, you reporting for Standard Voice Television. Groups including the Christian Association of Nigeria and the Catholic Society of Nigeria have won political parties against fielding a Muslim Muslim ticket in the 2023 presidential election. They gave the warning as the president, Major General Muhammad Dubuhari, retired. The All Progressive Congress Governors and the party's presidential candidate, Asiwaju Bola Tinubu, on Tuesday intensified moves to pick Tinubu's running mate ahead of Friday's deadline by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Khan, in an open letter addressed to all political parties on Tuesday, said it will take a Muslim Muslim ticket as a, as a declaration of war and will mobilize against political parties that adopted it. The religious body in the letter advised politicians not to sow seeds of religious conflicts among Nigerians. The letter, which was signed by the National Secretary of the Association, Joseph Daramola, was addressed to the chairman of all political parties in Nigeria. And on business... The World Bank says the cost of fuel subsidy in Nigeria has exceeded the government's spending on health, education and social protection for Nigerians. It's therefore said that removing fuel subsidy will help the government toward its poverty reduction scheme. The Washington-based lender said this in its latest Nigerian Development Update report titled The Continuing Urgency of Business Unusual, which was released on Tuesday. The report read in part, in 2021, Nigeria's petrol subsidy cost around $4.5 billion, or roughly 2% of the GDP, far exceeding federal government spending on health, education, and social protection. Therefore, diverting spending away from the petrol subsidy towards more pro poor causes could help spread the gains of growth, which is essential for reducing poverty. According to the bank, Nigeria is not benefiting from high oil prices due to the lower oil output and fuel subsidy costs. And now an international scene. Russian forces on Tuesday stepped up efforts to cut off Ukrainian troops in the key industrial city of Severodonetsk in the east of the country, despite Ukrainians insisting they were holding on. Moscow has laid siege for weeks to the cities of Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, which are separated by a river, as the last areas in the eastern Donbass region of Lugansk still under Ukrainian control. The head of Severodonetsk administration said massive shelling had destroyed a third bridge linking the twin cities, but insisted his city was not isolated. On Monday, Sergei Gaidei, governor of Lugansk, told newsmen that Russian forces had destroyed all the bridges and getting into the city is no longer possible, saying evacuation is also not possible. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has branded the human cost of the battle for East simply terrifying, urging Western allies to speed arms deliveries to shore up Ukraine's ability to reclaim territory. And now on sports. Former Manchester City captain Vincent Kompany has been appointed as the new manager of Burnley, the championship club announced on Tuesday. 
the retired Belgium international 36, who was in charge at the and the ledge until last month said he was excited by the challenge ahead. Company who takes over from Ketika Mike Jackson said, Burnley Football Club is a truly historic English side and it is an honor to be appointed as first team manager. Jackson replaced long seven boss Shane Ditch in April but could not save the club from relegation to the second tire championship. The former defender said he is looking forward to getting to work with the players and creating a positive winning team for their fans when they return to Turf Moor. And that's all we have a news update today. But before we go, a quick look at the major headlines. Governor Bill Lomachawa leads the price rising banded tree. Abductors of wedding guests reduce ransom to 16 million naira. Christian Association of Nigeria and others won parties of Muslim Muslim tickets. On business, subsidy overtakes health, education and welfare budgets brought back once Nigeria. On international food, Russians seem to encycle several Donetsk. President Zelensky prints for arms and sports. X Men City Captain Company appointed as Burnley Manager. Thank you, that's the news. On behalf of the editorial crew, head of news and current affairs department, once again I am Mumu Mohammed. Saying thanks for watching, keep watching Tender Television. Good afternoon.